How's it going, everybody? Starwin here with a submission of Bloodstain Curse of the Moon low percent. Uh, so, Bloodstain Curse of the Moon has been out for about a year now. It's been shown off at many a marathon. You've probably seen the likes of Zangetsu Ultimate, Any Percent Out of Bounds, uh, Nightmare Any Percent, uh, all with really cool, unique strats uh, to get to the game as quick as possible. But then there's low percent. So, low percent. Uh, not very many people run this category, uh, probably because it is one of the harder categories to do in the game. Uh, mainly because we can't pick up power-ups, we can't get weapon, like weapon energy, uh, like max refills, health max refills. Uh, what else? You can't recruit party members, you can't kill them for, so Zangetsu can like obtain new abilities. All you have is Samurai Man Zangetsu with his sword and sub-weapons. That's it. Uh, so it does make for a very difficult run, but not an impossible run to do in Marathon. Mainly, the game does give a lot of checkpoints and a lot of health in crucial areas. And we kind of base the damage boosts that we do so we can pick up that health. Uh, so, that's pretty much the long short of it. Now we just need to get to the game and show off how awesome this run is. So I'll be playing on Normal Veteran. Normal is just the classic difficulty. And then, or the mode, I should say. And then the style is going to be Veteran. So Veteran, uh, if you take damage, you'll get knocked back. And we do want that... Uh, for this run, because damage boosting is very important. Alright, here we go. Blah. Because uh, if we were playing on casual, uh, the route is completely different. Mouse, get out of the feed, please. Alright, so stage one is <laughs> pretty bare bones, nothing, nothing too difficult. Stage one and stage two are going to be uh, the easier stages to do in this category. For the most part, stage one is... Uh, you're going to be playing it just like you would normally for the first time, except right here. We're going to do a damage boost with these ghosts. So I'm going to lure these ghosts right over here. And hopefully we'll get bounced up uh, up to the top right there. Uh, sadly, missing that makes you have to go down, which takes a little bit longer. And I don't want to do that because this, this is a go fast. It's not a go slow. So the same thing right here, I'm going to get hit by that fire just to get pushed forward a little bit more. That's pretty much the main strat that you're going to see, is me taking damage <laughs> to move forward a little bit more, a little bit quicker. Uh, which is kind of scary in the same way, because uh, it's <laughs> I, I will also not have health <laughs> at some crucial parts. So for those that don't know about uh, Bloodstained and its origin, so this is pretty much uh, Iga's... Uh, baby. It's his next baby besides Castlevania. After Iga had left Konami, decided to make this awesome game. Had a really, really successful Kickstarter. So now we have Curse of the Moon and Ritual of the Night. Curse of the Moon kind of focuses on the old-school Castlevania aesthetic, while Ritual of the Night plays a lot more like a Metroidvania-style game. Uh, both fantastic. If you've never played these games casually, they're definitely worth a play. And just like that, we're uh, done with Stage 1. You probably saw a lot of different enemy archetypes, kind of similar to uh, Castlevania, like Medusa Heads, uh, the zombies, bats. You're going to see a lot of that stuff. The one thing that's truly unique in this game are its bosses. Uh, this is the Glutton Train. Uh, he is a big boy, and he is very hungry, and he wants to eat his coal and shoot fire. So we're going to try to go for a triple hit right here. That works. That should be it. Nice. Okay. So one of the cool things, after every boss fight, bosses will do a desperation attack. As you can see, it does a lot of damage. The cool thing is, is that it actually will never cause lethal damage. The only time that ever matters is if you're doing a boss rush. Because in boss rush, you just don't get your health back at the end of a stage. You actually have to... Make sure you don't lose a bunch of health, because once you go back to the hub world, you only have two hearts, like big hearts, to help replenish your health. It's kind of like, uh, like Kirby Superstar on the SNES when you do the arena. 
So on these first three stages, we're actually, every time we beat a boss, we're going to have the opportunity to recruit a party member or kill a party member. Uh, which we will not be doing at all. We're just going to completely ignore them. It's as if Zangetsu is blind and cannot see them. Alright. On to stage two. Like I said, stage stage one, two. Nothing too difficult. Uh, the difficulty, difficulty really ramps up in stage three. A lot of scary damage boost sequences. Uh, if I miss uh, throwing like a magic charm... One of the sub-weapons Zangetsu uses. It's actually the one that I have equipped right now. I miss, like, throwing it at a certain spot. It can be really tricky. But, and then stage 4 has, like, the scariest damage boost in the game. There's just a lot of, there's a lot of factors that make this run really hard and really scary. But again, uh, dying probably only means losing maybe 20 to 30 seconds. And that might seem like a lot, but for, like, uh, if you're going for, like, a PB, that it really sucks to die. But... In a marathon setting, it shouldn't be a big deal. I mean, just to, just for example, the world record right now has two deaths. I don't I don't think uh, the record has uh, had a deathless run yet. So right here, we're gonna have be introduced to these stupid bat enemies and these stupid frog enemies. Bats and frogs, easily the most annoying enemies to deal with. So the frogs, which you're gonna see right now uh, in a, like a second. They will constantly chase you unless you kill them. They're like the Flea Men from, like, uh, Castlevania 1. Or any old-school Castlevania, for that matter. Oh, how nice of you to give me two frogs. I love you. I love you, game. So, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon... Uh, each level has a bunch of branching paths. Usually you have to have, like, someone's special ability in order to access that path, like, uh, Miriam's sliding, or uh, Alfred's fire shield, or G-Bell's ability to turn to a bat and fly. Uh, while we can't use, uh, we can't use a lot of the shortcuts, there are a few that Zongetsu can get to without using, uh, one of his, uh, friend's abilities. For example, we're going to be using the charm a lot to get past certain parts that we shouldn't be able to get past. Oh, man. Okay, this this damage boost is fun, and I really hope I get it. So instead of having to kill this next ice golem up here, I'm just going to jump right onto his attack. It's going to throw me forward, and I'm just going to use my invincibility frames to walk right through that jerk. You gonna be mean? Okay, no, he was actually he was he was nice. So this is I can't remember his name. Turtle Man, Ma Mas Master Roshi. That's his name. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're gonna go with Master Roshi. So right here, we're gonna throw down the magic charm while he's busy uh, whipping his attacks constantly. We're just gonna keep dealing some damage to him, and then he's gonna go off screen. And now he's going to go into this, like, uh, phase where he has, he's going to surround himself with bubbles and move across the stage. But hopefully we did enough damage to where he's not going to do that. If not... Okay. Barely. We barely killed him. And uh, his desperation attack has run to the wall as hard as he can. That's all I got. He shoot bubbles! Desperation, he's mad, desperation, fly through the wall. That's all you got. So again, we freed another party member. This is going to be Alfred. What's up, Alfred? How you doing? Just leave him bloody and broken. Uh, it takes, I think it takes three hits to kill them. When you do kill them, you will acquire an ability. So I guess he usually has uh, his three abilities he can learn. It's like a jump slash, a sprint, and a and double jump. So, having all those uh, abilities from the start, which uh, it's really useful, and it's why Zangetsu Ultimate is one of the more popular categories to run. But now we're on stage three. And like I was saying earlier, stage three is where this starts to get a little annoying. Deaths are going to happen at any point. I'm going to try my best for that not to happen. 
So we're gonna get past all these archers. Now, they're, over here, there's gonna be, like, a super archer. Usually, you would use Alfred's fire shield to get past him. But we're gonna throw a magic charm. And I'm gonna... Uh, I'm gonna try that again. Don't really wanna take... You don't wanna get hit by this guy. Like that. So if you're too late on throwing the charm, landing on the arrows will do a lot of damage. That guy does so much damage if you get hit. So, just... For, there you go. Right from the get-go, showing off that stage 3 is actually uh, increasing the difficulty of the run. So we're going to lose about, eh, like a minute. Not the worst thing in the world. Just got to get through these guys again. Now, I will say, if I do die again, uh just gonna go ahead and say uh, bye you're never gonna see this run again because I'm going to delete it <laughs> and try again uh, taking two deaths right here is just not it's just not worth it that's how that's supposed to look so we're gonna keep it we're gonna keep it we're gonna keep the run all right so now this lower path is a lot quicker than doing the top path usually when you have to like go through like one of those shortcut places it's it's usually a lot quicker so right here, we're going to have to deal with these bats, which, like I've said before, are incredibly annoying. I'm going to try my best just to kill this guy. There we go, because I, I hate dealing with these guys. They are super annoying. The good thing is, though, boom, get some health. And we're at full health, which is perfect, because having full health at this point... Uh, is going to help me be able to do a bunch of damage boosts. Not in this room, but in the next one. So, in the next room, we're actually going to be at, like, a Crusher sec uh, segment. Kind of like uh, like Mega Man 4, uh, Dust Man stage. Uh, I, like, I love making that reference, because uh, when I was a kid, that stage was the, uh, like, the bane of my existence. But unlike Mega Man 4, when we get crushed, we don't instantly die. We're just going to take about four points of damage. And then keep going on. I'm actually going to be using these spikes to propel myself forward so I can move a little bit closer to the exit. And if everything goes well, I can actually make it through here with only taking uh, uh, two boosts. But if worse comes to worse, which it might, and it didn't... Even if I would have got hit right there, I still would have been propelled forward. And I think I would have been left with about two health. So not the worst thing in the world. Now we're at full health, we have perfect weapon energy for this boss fight. We have Demon Essence, uh, which is a ability you haven't seen yet. So Demon Essence will increase the... You'll activate it. It's like an aura. Whatever attack that you do uh, will be increased by one damage. Uh, but here comes the best boss in the game. This is Veil 4. God, I love this boss. His design is awesome. So we're going to activate the Demon Essence, and we're going to try our best to get about 9 hits... Which isn't the easiest thing to do. That's good. So there is a chance that we might get the, the quick kill. Nope, I missed a jump. No, I missed like two jumps. Okay, that's fine. Oh, that's never good when he laughs. So... Uh, the quickest, uh, quickest way to beat him, I think it's like, uh, like 20 something slashes in order to, uh, have him go away. And he'll start his desperation attack, but sometimes it just doesn't happen that way. So there we go. Because when he pushes up the first set of coins, he, he sets it up perfect to where you can, like, jump hit them, and get on the next level of coins, but the other ones you actually have to set up yourself. And sometimes you can, you'll can, you mess it up, and it, it is what it is. So that's stage three. Uh, I'm actually really happy to be done with that stage. Not my favorite in the run. But stage four is coming up with the spookiest damage boost of them all. We're going to say bye to G-Bell. So, no more, no more uh, people that we can recruit. That's it. Um, they... they the developers were trying to go for the Castlevania 3 uh, kind of gameplay style where you can change between party members. So, like, Zangetsu, I guess, would be Trevor. 
Uh, G-Bell would be like Alucard. Alfred would be Sypha. And I guess Miriam is Grant. I guess just because she has more uh, maneuverability. Alright, stage four is kind of a vertical climb stage. There's a few segments where we're just going to be going up. Uh, the stage is like two huge towers. If you were, if you were playing this area in uh, Ritual of the Night, it's just go up, go up, go up, go up. Uh, throw down the magic charm to block those arrows so we can just keep on keeping on. A lot of archers in this segment. And see if I can't get this jump right here. Nope. I jumped a little too late. You have to get right in front of that dude's face. And if you're lucky and you jump at the right time, you actually could jump over him without having to kill him. But uh, taking a couple damage is really not a big deal. So when we do get to the damage boost that I've been uh, hyping up... Uh, it's a good possibility that I might die. If I do die, not a big deal. It's, uh, the checkpoint is right there. Like, you might lose, like, maybe 20 seconds. But since we died in stage 3, I'm definitely going to go for the first try. The, the good thing is, is while if you, you know, 9 times out of 10, if you do mess it up, you're probably going to just fall in the pit and die. But sometimes if you don't position yourself right, you'll actually, uh... Take the damage boost, and you'll fly backwards back to the platform that you started on. But we are going to try to get propelled forward. The whole thing is trying to clear a huge gap while jumping on a, a ghost uh, at the right time. Alright, here comes the area right here. actually did not mean to pick that whip up her ball and chain but all right here we go let's see if we can get this set up positions good and we got it first try like i said that is that is this when you're trying when you're grinding pbs and stuff that is the scariest part in the run and the good thing is the game is nice enough to give you a little bit of health uh, so you recover the uh, the damage you just took from the boost oh backwards jump those are fun have this guy fall on that. So, we're about to be... You just saw that dude. Now you're about to be introduced to a lot of them. These axe guys... Oh, boy. Are... Uh, besides, like, the bats... These guys are absolutely infuriating. They'll just go back and forth randomly... And throw one or two axes. This is the only time we have a, a part where we're actually going to deal with the... Uh, the red axe guys. Uh, for the rest of the game, we're going to see the white ones... The white ones will always throw one to three. And, and it's random. So sometimes you might jump forward thinking, oh, I can, like, jump slash and hit one of the one of the guys. Uh, no. Because you'll get hit by a third axe that you weren't expecting. I almost died. That was spooky. I actually played a little safe here. I did take a little bit more damage than I thought. Kill that guy. All right, we're at the stage four boss. This is Valak. Uh, I like to call him the the squeaker dragon, just because he has a, t a really adorable voice. So I'll let it speak for itself. Oh, he's such a good boy. All right, first things first, we have to kill both heads, which usually consists of hitting the bottom head first and then going after this guy right here. Since I am on low health, I am I'm not gonna risk uh, <laughs> jumping into that guy. Getting hit by the, those projectiles, man, those things hurt. All right, so he's not done yet. He does have a second phase. Right here, we're gonna throw a magic charm and start hitting him with the sword. And as we are jumping back to dodge the fire, we're gonna hit him again. And this should be a two-phase fight, or a two-cycle fight. So, traditionally, what I've noticed through uh, uh, this game's life cycle is that people, some people will use the ball and chain, some people will use the magic charm. And it seems like a lot more people go for the ball and chain for that boss fight, for, for instance, because in the first phase you can hit both heads by just getting close enough. But in stage five... 
the the path that we have to take, if you use the ball and chain, you it, it makes it a lot slower. So, and I think it's quicker to fight Valak with the magic charm to where you can move faster here. Because there's no way to get a magic charm here at this point. All right, so stage five, we're on this boat. And this boat is scary because there's a bunch of these squid guys. Because he... Uh, this is the stage where you're most likely going to die by getting hit and falling in a pit. That's just that's just how it goes. So right here, since I use the magic charm, I'm actually able to kill these uh, spiders. If you were using the ball and chain, you'd actually have to wait for them to fire web, sit there, and then close the chest, and then you can use them as a platform. But I just feel like it's so much easier to do that way. And the Valak fight is... is not as hard with the magic charm, it's... But, personal preference, whatever you want to do. Alright, so this is like the first sp uh, spooky part in this area is dealing with these guys. Because a lot of these squid dudes are going to keep spawning. Like this guy right here, I hate that guy. Because he doesn't jump off the edge when he's supposed to. Let's see if we can't get this damage boost. Didn't get it, but guess what? The ball and chain will take them out. Uh, one hit. Usually if you jump uh, underneath the projectile that last purple squid is shooting, you'll get projected forward and you can just use your iframes and walk past them, but... <sighs> backup strats. Gotta have backup strats for this kind of category. It's very spooky when one of them doesn't work. Alrighty, we're coming up to, I guess, technically the first mini-boss in the game. This is Welcome Company. It's just a painting that flies around. But after it flies back and forth a few times, it has an instant kill attack, which... Uh, ball and uh, the ball and chain just kind of destroys this, uh, <laughs> this boss, so... Don't ever really get to see it, but man, Beginner's Trap, if you ever have to fight that dude without the ball and chain, good luck. All right, now I think we're going to be outside. Yeah, so this stage has some wind physics, kind of like Ninja Gaiden 3. Uh, the boss fight of this stage is actually actually takes place outside, so... We'll be going inside one more time, and then we'll be back outside momentarily. We have to deal with one more room with a bunch of those squid enemies, and... Uh, it's not as scary as that one room that we've already done. But still, I get freaked out. If you just miss a jump and you get hit in the wrong way, you'll fall in a pit. It, it's awful. It's the pits. It's the pits. Alright. Back to Demon Essence, because Demon Essence is awesome against these guys. One shot. Like, right there, for example. If you don't hit your sword at the right time... You're going to take damage, you're going to fall in that pit. It happens to me so much. Go up. Good up. Oh, good boy. Alright. Rest of the stage is going to be outside. Deal with these stupid axe guys. We're actually going to come up... This part right here is a little... It's a little tricky. Oh, God. Yeah, because if you jump forward, you're going to... You're going to be propelled by the wind. And you really, really want to kill... These archers. Because right here, if you didn't kill them, they're going to be shooting the arrows at you. And it's really hard to, like, jump across, like, jump over all of them because of the wind. Uh, we're, we're good on... We're good on health. We're good on weapon energy. All right. This is, uh, again, I don't know his name. This guy, this guy actually has, like, one of the most, like, the longest, most annoying name. Uh, he looks like C Cyber Peacock and he fights like Storm Eagle. He's Storm Peacock. That's what I'm going for. So let's see what kind of RNG he's going to give us. He's going to do his uh, his Storm Eagle attack, where he's going to shoot a tornado at us. Just fine. We're going to try and get as much damage as possible. Usually this is a two-cycle fight. Just kind of depends how this guy wants to do things. And it looks like we're going to get a couple of uh, tornado attacks. Nice. It was really close, but it's still a two-cycle fight. Uh, if he goes to the right, he'll actually dash forward 
and then jump backwards and he just kind of sits there for a bit. That's like, that attack right here, that's what he usually does. He definitely has one of the cooler desperation attacks though, that's for sure. But now that we have crossed the sea with this uh, janky boat, we are now at the castle. Three stages left. Stage six is... The stage is alright. The boss is a nightmare. The boss is really scary, which I'm going to try and play it safe. It's scary when you're trying to quick kill her. Uh, stage seven is the longest and most terrifying stage in the game. The boss fight is super easy. Stage eight has one really scary room, and that's about it. The final boss is not too bad. Just kind of depends on what kind of RNG you get, but... We'll cross that bridge when we get there. First, we gotta focus on stage six. So that's actually the the power glove or power gauntlet, whatever you want to call it, would increase your damage if you got it. Uh, sadly, we cannot. And you don't want to get hit by those. Those things hurt. Hey, we got a despawn. Usually, there's another shield guy right there. We're gonna jump over this dude, and nice. If you jump out at that ledge at the right time. You can actually get, like, a pixel-perfect stair. Uh, uh, you're basically right on the stairs, which I really haven't explained that. And I've been doing it this whole run. So, like, uh, Castlevania 1 through 3, for example. If you want to go upstairs, you actually have to hold up at the very bottom step. Here, though, if we just jump on the steps and hold up, we just land on that step, which is so nice. It's definitely an upgrade from the, uh, the old-school games. Because there are a few spots where I'm going to be falling down, and there's going to be a bunch of stairs. And if I just hold up at any point, boom, we just latch onto We actually did it in uh, stage four, if I'm not mistaken. Ugh. This room is terrifying because of these axe guys. Because what you want to happen is them to walk into the magic charm, and you just kill them. But sometimes these jerks just don't like to cooperate. They cooperated today, which I'm... Very happy with, but... Ugh. I just walk past that guy. So we're gonna... <sighs> come up to a couple of scary rooms. One is just super RNG dependent on enemy spawns. But first we have to deal with the spooky scissorman. Shoutouts to Clock Tower. I really hope that was their inspiration. Yeah, you, you, you don't have to fight these guys. Anytime they spawn, there's usually a way out, and that's you getting on the stairs. Uh, this room is a little scary. Depending on what kind of uh, enemy spawns you get, this room can be absolutely terrifying. Because of stuff like that. You'll just you'll jump, and then you'll get hit. That's the worst one right there. Is if you have someone spawn right there, you have to like neutral jump on that tiny platform. Ugh. If you get hit, you're going to fall in the pit. Mm. Did I mention the music in this game is jamming? And the game just looks awesome? Aesthetically, this game is... The bee's knees. Alright, we're coming up to the boss. Really close. have a few more rooms to do. First, we have to get past another of one of those really OP archers blocking a pathway. We also have to get past three of these bats. Usually this setup just leads to maybe me getting hit once, and right there we actually didn't get hit at all. So that's nice. And that setup is way easier than the one at the uh, on stage three, because you're able to get really close to him before he actually starts shooting. Alright, health is looking good. That's nice. Uh, this room should look a little familiar if you've ever played Castlevania 1. So usually you're supposed to, if I was going to be uh, going for a PB, I would actually not blow or uh, destroy the hammer that he throws and take the damage and walk through him, but I want to have a lot of health right here because this boss fight can be really annoying. Uh, this is Bloodless. I don't know why she's called Bloodless. She has like 50 gallons of blood to work with.
Oh, what a good fight. That was a very, very solid fight. So, her uh, desperation attack, which she's going to hit me by, she's going to end up hitting me. You're, you're actually supposed to, like, use the umbrellas as platforms and then hit her head. But, that's fine. We <laughs> got past the stage. The stage was really good. The boss fight was good. Now we just have to worry about the last two stages. So stage seven, like I said, th if I if there was going to be a death in this run, it's probably going to be here. And I'm going to try my best not to. This stage is really long and really difficult. And this whole first part right here, I really don't need to take damage. So I'm going to play it really safe. There's going to be a damage boost uh, segment where we need to have quite a bit of health to get past. Okay, good, good, good. Got it, okay. This room is usually the reason why you would have to, like, take a death at the damage boost part. But, made it through that room with flying colors. Oh, just listen to this song. Uh, th this is this is the best song in the game. It's either stage seven or stage five. This is easily my favorite song in the game. Which I'm sad they didn't put it in Ritual, but that's fine. They put stage five in Ritual. It's actually the opening song. All right, we've got these uh, Mario-esque kind of blocks, the appearing and disappearing blocks. This area, however, is a little bit... It's a little bit easier to do in this game, because it's like, oh, red and blue. Oh, my goodness, please no. Go up the stairs, you jabroni. I should be good on health. Okay. Alright, so this is the damage boost area I was talking about. So first things first, we need to kill the frog. Frogs are really annoying in this spot. And we need to get this axe guy all the way over to the right. So he's going to throw his axe. Oh, crap. Oh, I still might be able to do this. Oh, with two health left to spare. Oh, my goodness. That frog came down there. He, that frog usually doesn't come down there. So the good thing is, yeah, we just did that damage boost part. And that is definitely one of the scary parts to do. The game is nice enough to put some health right there that we can take. So, whew. The rest of this, the, now that we got that that hard part done, the rest of it is just making sure we don't fall in a pit. Uh, we have another welcome company. Let's see if we can't get a double hit. Nope, that's fine. You kind of want to get a double hit because you want to be as close as you can to that door. I uh, think of it like Mega Man when you go through a boss door. The game kind of has to like switch uh, screens so you can't move. As long as you finish the fight like closer to that door, the screen transition will immediately happen and then you don't have to worry about it. This game does a lot of things right, man. It's it's such... Ugh. I love this game. <laughs> uh, fun fact, though. I actually do not run any other category but low percent. I, I just love the old school Castlevania feel. But uh, all the other categories in this game are fantastic. They're all great, great runs. Alright, so now we're coming up to one of the areas where dying you'll just fall in a pit and die. And I'm going to play... This room, kind of safe. I don't like that platform, you'll see why. Uh, it doesn't mesh well with that platform. Ugh, and it meshes well with that one right there. Like, it's just scary, man. Ugh. If I would have gone on an earlier platform, it would have been uh, ten times scarier. Oh, I got hit by that frog and I didn't, I didn't fly back. Oh my god. Whew. I'll take the... I'm not going to take the damage boost. That's another spot where you just take the hammer. Oh, the stage, man. The stage will be the death of me. Like, quite literally. This is definitely the butt-clinching stage. Oh, you gotta hit me like that. Alright. We have, like, two more rooms that are uh, a little terrifying, but after that, we are... we're The stage is done. Uh, this room looks bad, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Alright. 
Almost there. Hey, it's this guy again. Remember him from stage one? This time we're actually gonna kill him. All right, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put all my focus into this room right here. This is one of the scariest rooms in the game. Got ourselves a run on. Don't be a jerk. Oh, he wasn't a jerk. But now I'm worried about these stupid fairy things. These things are jerks. Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I, usually you can just skip killing the last fairy, but uh, my luck recently, I am not taking any chances because. We are pretty much at the boss fight. The boss fight is not hard at all. It's super, super simple. All right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Good stuff. Um, I can't remember this guy's name either. He's a book lizard. He has a book. Uh, we're gonna abuse him with the magic charm a lot. Okay, I, I, it took way too much damage. That was uh, a little terrifying. Oh no, what am I gonna do? Oop. I love that. It's so cool. Whew. You guys spooked yet? You guys scared yet? I, it's, ooh. This, this run is a doozy! All right, stage eight. Stage eight is ki is kind of short, but my goodness, does it have a lot of powerful enemies that we have to deal with. And we also have to deal with that monstrosity. I think they're bugs. Uh, it's definitely a uh, part of Grimmery, which is the final boss. It's uh, their, one of their attacks. All right, so here's an example of a room where we just kind of fall and then hold up on the stairs. Yeah, we don't have to, like, climb all the way down. I have to worry about getting hit by those, uh, like, the bugs. I think they're bugs. They seem like they're bugs. Ah, uh, this room's so funny, because, like, they spawn all these enemies, and it's like, oh, get ready to kill all these things, and then these things just kill it. They kill, like, every enemy in the room. The only really, really scary part about this stage is that there's only one checkpoint. So, like, if I were to die right here, it would not be good. Like that. Just like that. So I'm pretty sure this puts you at the beginning. I'm almost certain. Okay, no. Okay, we're good. No, this is fine. We're fine. We, we, I can work with this. I, I can work with this. I, you know, because I, I, usually, I usually don't die right there. But uh, again, <laughs> this this game can get really stressful. And it's just more proof that yes, while you still die in this game, guess what? You can still have a good marathon run. Usually the only really scary part of this area is the uh, final room that leads to uh, the final boss Grimmery. Faking me out with your fire attacks, dog. That's not nice. All right, now we're, we just we just hit a checkpoint. This is the last. This is the last checkpoint. I can at least tell you that much. So what? We're at two deaths. Uh, World record has two deaths. So that's not bad. 
I mean, they, they had, like, uh, uh, good deaths, as in, oh, we need a de we need a force death to do the damage boost, but that's fine. Ooh, 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 ooh. Alright, get some weapon energy back. Well, no. That's health. I don't need health. Alright, this part's a little spooky. Uh, pretty much if you mess up a jump, you're gonna die. Because this thing catches up to you real quick. Alright, a couple more rooms to go. We gotta kill this guy. These guys, if you let them start attacking you, they are vicious. And now we have the last room in the game. It's a bunch of frogs. And I'll let it speak for itself. So, <laughs> that was a little uh, iffy, but we made it, so that's fine. And now we are at Grimmery, the final boss in the game. So Grimmery has, uh, you know, its final boss. She has two phases. Uh, this first phase is really RNG dependent. She's gonna spawn those, those that big trail of bugs, and then like shoot a bunch of orbs. And we really, really want her uh, to not put that where we want to hit her, like that. We don't, we don't like that. Yeah. So that wasn't good. That was just bad RNG. It happens. Sitting at 40 minutes, three deaths, we definitely can make this. Uh, that was just really bad RNG. Uh, I've never really seen her uh, uh, do what she did. She actually moved way far to the left. And, and that's really unusual movement from her. Alright, but guess what? We just get to do this again. I think that's good RNG? Yeah, see, that's what you want. That's what you want to see. You're not taking damage. That, I don't know if that's good. Okay, that's the first phase. I, you don't get any health back for this next phase. The good thing is, this phase really isn't that hard. The first phase is the phase that is terrifying. This final boss music, though, oh, my heart. Be still, my beating heart. Alright. So. Grimmery can do one of two things in this first part. She can spawn these yellow moons, or she can spawn purple moons. Yellow moons are quicker because both sets of moons will come at us at the same time. Uh, the purple moons actually take a little bit longer to deal with. And her weakness is that little moon thing above her head, and we need to hit her 20 times with the ball and chain. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. You want to go for eight shots each time. First one, eight. Second one, eight. And then the last phase, four. That's uh, optimal RNG. And she's actually giving us uh, really, really good RNG. The, like I said, the yellow moons definitely take uh, a lot shorter. And they have a higher chance of actually dispensing more weapon energy. All right, so that was seven, so we need to get five on the next one. So this is one of her big, like, one of her big attacks. Uh, not too scary. As long as you stand in the shadows, as you can see on the castle, you're not gonna get hit by that big pillar. Wow, just really good RNG on this fight. And we should be done. This should, this should be it.
And with three deaths, this will be underestimate. And that's it. All we gotta do now is charge up this final slash and we must cleave the moon. There we go. A 4326 with three deaths. So let, let me think about this. We had a death at stage three, so that cost us about, you know, 45 seconds. Uh, where's the other death at? Where's, where's the second death? We had two, did we have two? Yeah, we had two deaths on stage eight. We had a death uh, where I thought like, oh man, if I die here, uh, it's it's crucial. It's really bad because uh, there's, there's only like one checkpoint, which I was wrong about. That's my fault. And then we died on Grimmery once. So if we wouldn't have died at Grimmery, it probably would have been like a 40, like a high 41. But really good. Uh, made an underestimate. That's like the whole point, that's like the whole purpose of this, is just showing off the game, showing off the difficulty, and showing how, just how uh, great of a game Bloodstained Curse of the Moon is. So, uh, I appreciate you all for watching, giving this a, a consideration for uh, whatever marathon this uh, is going to be submitted for. Um, really hope you'll uh, take low percent into consideration. Definitely needs to be shown off at some point. It's a hell of a run, and it's uh, really, really fun to show off. Um, and who doesn't like good old Castlevania-esque games? I mean... Uh, so, we're gonna let the credits roll, and then I'll see the in-game time. Uh, we... They... I... They... Keep everything on track by in -game, uh, by RTA in this game, because I think every console loads the same. I could be wrong. Um, and then there's the end game timer. Michiru Yamane, thank you <laughs> for making music. For those that don't know, Michiru Yamane is the uh, person that composed like Symphony of the Night, uh, uh, Lament of Innocence, like, whew, so many good games. Shots to pull to win. And you you kind of you kind of get to see too since we did do low percent. If you've been looking at the pictures, you're seeing a lot of the other uh, characters showing off their abilities. Like that's Alfred's fire shield. That thing is super useful. And then there's us about to cleave the moon. Thank you, Inti Creates, for making such a fantastic, fantastic game. My goodness. I, I'm very passionate about this game. I love this game. It's definitely, like, in my top five of all time now. All right. So let's see that, that good old in-game time real quick. 37.22. Not bad. All right. So once again, everybody, I've been Starwind. This has been Bloodstained Curse of the Moon Low Percent. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you do take this in consideration in your next marathon. Uh, and I'll see you all in the next submission. Thanks again for watching.